My name is Dr Ken Sakaris. I'm a clinical chemist from Melbourne, Australia, where I work in a very large private laboratory practice. Well, diabetes and obesity are probably the biggest health problem that the world faces in the West and growing in developing countries like um, China and India. So the, in Australia, 60% of Australians are overweight or obese. In India, it's not quite as severe because in the countryside, in the lower socioeconomic, they're not yet obese, but certainly the urbanisation has led to a, a massive increase in obesity, diabetes and prediabetes, and they have the complications of increasing heart disease, eye disease and kidney disease. And so, you know, unless a country does, addresses this growing epidemic, their healthcare system is going to face enormous costs in the future. We've, we've known about diabetes for many decades, really. Oh, historically, ancient times, we've been able to measure the sugar levels in urine or in blood. But uh, we need more reliable markers for that. And, and something that's happened more locally is that the there's a test which measures how much sugar is attached to haemoglobin, the haemoglobin A1C test, which is a much more reliable indicator of not only the effects of diabetes, but also the risk of developing diabetes. And so the haemoglobin A1C test has become the new standard for the diagnosis of diabetes and for the prediction of prediabetes and the risk of developing diabetes which is important because um, you know, we, we're trying to prevent diabetes ultimately. Well, other than being aware of patients that are at risk and managing them, ideally we want to address this global issue. And whilst we've, people have been mainly focusing on how inactive we are sitting in front of TVs and in offices, the main issue in my mind is clearly diet. And that's what the urbanisation is about, that diets are very unhealthy. They contain a lot of sugar, a lot of carbohydrates. They're very unnatural, a little too much processed food. And so I expect that in the next five or ten years, people are going to be aware that real food, vegetables, meat, um, fruit and so on, is really what the human body was built for. And we have to revert back to those natural diets of our ancestors when people weren't dying of diabetes and heart disease. I mean, diabetes is a calorie problem about um, acquiring too many calories as um, carbohydrates and converting them to fat and cholesterol. But there are, others, there are other important diet, uh, dietary issues that I think of, and one of them is uh, a vitamin, vitamin B12. And vitamin B12 is normally found in dairy food and fish and meat. So normally people have adequate amounts of, vit of vitamin B12, but there is a group of patients, particularly in India, who have low levels of consumption of meat and fish. And it's partly socioeconomic, but also very much to do with religion and vegetarianism. Now, the prevalence of vitamin B12 deficiency in the West is 10 to 15%. And in, amongst vegetarians in uh, India, it's even higher. So the, the important thing is, why am I worried about it? Because vitamin B12 deficiency can cause things like anemia, but before that happens, it causes neurological problems. So it increases the risk of dementia. And so I'm really worried that this pr high prevalence of vitamin B12 deficiency in an aging population may be increasing the amounts of demented patients we're going to be dealing with in the future, which will increase the challenges of, of really coping with the costs of an ageing population. So you know, vitamin B12 deficiency, and also probably because I'm growing older, we want to maintain our optimal state of health in our older years. And I think that if we can avoid diabetes, the next thing to consider is our mental health and vitamin B12. Yeah, so for, for diabetes, the high-risk patients are those that are overweight, and simple as that, because people try to ignore weight. They say that it's a genetic problem. and No, weight is a very strong indicator of prediabetes and diabetes. And similarly with B12, we can tell which patients are at risk because their diet places them at risk. There are other factors that place them at risk as well. 
um, including a family history of, of vitamin deficiencies, uh, uh, autoimmune diseases which cause malabsorption, and some of the medications we have now, so, so like um, proton pump inhibitors that decrease reflux, or metformin that's used to treat diabetes, they can affect B12 absorption. So in a way we're treating one disease and causing another disease. And so laboratories have developed new tests for vitamin B12 deficiency, which give us far greater, they're becoming cheaper and more accessible. So I think that if a patient is thought to be at risk because of their diet, because of their medications, people should be testing for vitamin B12 rather than assuming that the patient hasn't got a problem because what's at risk is their mental health. Drugs are chemicals, they're foreign chemicals to the body. So that's why when I was talking about diabetes, the right way to treat it isn't with metformin and drugs. The right way to treat it is at the source with a natural therapy. And the natural therapy is making sure we understand what a good diet is. And that same thing applies to vitamin B12. When we have an easy to access diet and we think we're getting all the nutrients we need, we probably aren't because they've been highly processed and a more natural diet is probably going to be the healthiest one. So, so it is very sad if we, we've got disease, we're, caught, we're treating it with drugs that have side effects, when the whole time we should have been handling them with uh, dietary management. So I think that people should be you know, addressing those dietary problems and that would usually reverse the disease or stop it in its tracks. And hopefully at that stage, they can stop those medications. But until you can reverse the disease or stop it through dietary management, then you have to run the risk of the side effects of drugs.